Okay, good afternoon everyone. Really great to see all the anti-war, anti-imperialist forces here today. And as has been pointed out, this is the 11th anniversary of the U.S.-led invasion of Afghanistan. I applaud you for coming out and participating. I also have to salute the courageous people of Afghanistan who have now been fighting back against imperialist aggression for 11 years causing the death and destruction of much of their country. And of course, this is something that Harper is fully participating in. I also salute all the peoples around the world who are resisting the attacks of the U.S. imperialists. I think it's very important that can people continue to take a militant and really uncompromising stand against all imperialist interventions in all countries around the world. There's a real, real danger of world war breaking out. There's a redivision of the world going on, as has been pointed out. And this would be a disastrous for the people of the world and, of course, for here, us here in Canada. That's why today we're putting forward the slogans, hands off Syria, hands off Iran, and Canada needs an anti-war government. Every country in the world has to be allowed to sort out their own problems, free of any meddling and coercion by outside forces. Of course, we know that U.S. interventions into other countries are always carried out under some high-sounding fraud, protecting human rights, humanitarian intervention, bringing democracy, and so on. But everybody knows these excuses are absurd and fraudulent. The U.S. has a defeat in over 70 countries around the world just since the end of the Second World War. And it's always been clear that the main purpose of those interventions, which were carried out under the hoax of containing communism, and now under the hoax of attacking terrorism, was to ensure that whoever ran those countries was not a representative of the people, but a slave who did the bidding of the U.S. These interventions have brought death and destruction to people in all those countries and never have brought an ounce of freedom. Give one example, the U.S. overthrew the Arbenz government in Guatemala in 1954. What followed was a war that killed 300,000 Guatemalans. Did any of the great defenders of human rights in the U.S. ruling circles raise a peep? Not a word, because as one American president once said, the people that ran Guatemala after that were sons of bitches, but they were U.S. friendly sons of bitches, so that was okay. So that's what they want all over the world. And as has already been mentioned, in the 1950s, through, they overthrew the Mossadegh government in Iran to bring in a government friendly to the British and the Americans. So let me return to the slogan, Canada needs an anti-war government. Where does the Harper dictatorship stand on the issue of imperialist intervention? Well, fully supporting it, of course. Harper wants to use force also to bring about a world which is under the thumb of the imperialists. He also uses his fear-mongering to achieve his aims by declaring that the Canadian people must be fearful of anyone who does not expose our values, which he puts forward as the values of imperialism, not as our values. So he conjures up bogus enemies, which of course include Iraq, Iria, Syria and Iran. Harper has also stated that Canadians require a strong state headed by a powerful leader. Does that sound familiar? Wasn't there one of those guys in the 1930s? If the word Fuhrer pops into your brain, no one could blame you. So someone was holding up a sign saying, Baird, why don't you shut up? I thought that was very appropriate. At the United Nations General Assembly, Baird attempted to redefine the goals of the United Nations. He did not promote the aim of the United Nations, which is to provide a way to peacefully settle disputes between and among nations based on principles of equality, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. That is how these things should be sorted out. Instead, Baird claimed that the U.S., the goal of the U.N. is to pursue prosperity. And in describing what constitutes prosperity, he said that prosperity is for everyone to cave into the demands of the monopolies for open markets. So they're completely obscuring that the road to prosperity is not to knuckle under to imperialism, but completely the opposite. The road to prosperity is self-reliance and the building of an economy based on manufacturing, which guarantees to meet the needs of all the people, not selling out under the hoax of free trade. No wonder Harper is madly wrecking Canadian manufacturing and allowing monopolies like the auto companies to blackmail Canadian workers to try to get them to accept concessions. The sham of free trade, it is that not free at all, but it is forced trade. 
It requires coming under the dictate of the U.S. Canada's trade should be based on mutual benefit, not on becoming a source of raw resources for monopolies. In Alberta, we express this in saying about our bitumen that we should not just ship it out raw to U.S. refineries, but we should refine it where we mine it. That's the basis of self-reliance. The Canada described by the Harperites is not the Canada of the Canadian people. Harper and Baird are instead elaborating the foreign policy of the United States of North American monopolies, which want to dominate the world to resolve the crisis in favor of the monopolies at the expense of us, at the expense of the people. The Canadian working class and people are a section of the entire humanity of the world. We should resolutely oppose all attempts to divide Canadians on the basis of empire building into the bogus categories of, as Baird says, friends, enemies, and soon to be enemies. <laughs> Syria and Iran are not our enemies. <laughs> if anyone is our enemy, it's it is Baird. the monopolies that have their headquarters in the United States. <laughs> they are the ones leading the destruction of our country with their wishes ably carried out by the Harper government. The Canadian working class and people are not in any competition with the working class and people of other countries such as Syria and Iran. That's right. Far from it. Canadians stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of all lands as a single whole against imperialist dom domination and monopoly right. The working class and people themselves, through their own efforts, must establish and build the Canada that is the basis of peace and friendship amongst all peoples of the world. Hands off Syria! Hands off Iran! Canada needs an anti-war government!